So it's morning once again, and we are talking about polytonal chords in section six from Ted Green's Chord Chemistry. I'm glad to be here with you today. I'm glad that you're sticking around and working through this with me. Poly chords and bitonal chords is what we're talking about today. We're just going to get right into it. But first, if you're if you don't have the book yet, it's a good idea to grab the book if you can. If you wanted to grab it here in the in a link or in the description or in this card, or if you'd like to grab it locally, if you can find it locally, that's great too. So. Thank you very much for the support if you do order it through the link and thank you very much for following along if you support a local a local business who's going to be able to fund your local T-ball team's t-shirts. So good work either way. The idea of polychords is given here just to present you with another viewpoint of or way of seeing chord construction. There are quite a few chords that consist of two triads or parts of two triads. Usually the notes of one triad are superimposed on top of another triad. The notes of both triads may be jumbled up. For example, we have an E7 triad and a B flat triad, which is an E7 flat 9 flat 5 in, in the spelling of it all. So we're on position number six, as you can see in the diagram here, if you're following along, seven, six, seven. And then we have the B flat triad, the top of the B flat triad, which is E flat seven, and then B flat on the top, which creates a root three flat seven, a flat nine and a flat five. Really cool sound. In many cases, one of the notes, one triad is common to the other. In this case, the E7 flat 9 flat 5 chord, the common note is the D note. So in the E7 flat 9 flat 5, you actually have an E7 chord and a B flat chord together. Here is the same chord in a different inversion. So we're going to be on fret 6 again, but this time we're placing the, we have the B flat triad on fret 6. And then we have the, th the root, the three, and then the five, as you can see in the diagram. It's, this one's kind of jumbled up. And then we have the notes from the E flat or the E7 in the middle of the, the voicing. So we would have the flat five, the root, the three, the flat seven, and the flat nine. Below is a list of some of the polytonal chords. They are given in the key of C, but as usual, they may be played in any key. In many cases, the bottom triad may leave out the fifth. Sometimes the bottom triad will be an incomplete seventh chord, usually one, three, flat, seven, or an incomplete triad, such as just the root and third, as in C major seven, natural five or sharp five, it would only have the sharp five if the fifth of the C triad were not included. You can achieve the desired sound sometimes by leaving out other notes as well. So we would leave other notes based on our own personal preferences. It's up to your ears is what he says, what Mr. Ted Green says in the very next phrase. The following are just suggestions. So we have the star indicates in this diagram that no third is necessary. So we have a C7 sharp nine, which has the, the C note or the C triad, C, E, G, and then the E flat triads, which are, which would be the E flat. So we have an E note here, we could use. So we have a one, three, five, and then the five is shared between, or the, the three, five, and one of the E flat triad. So we have the five, which is shared, the G. So we have a one, three, five, and then the flat seven, and then a sharp nine. Pretty well-known chord. Number two, we have a C, a C seven sharp nine flat five with a natural five. So that's E flat minor over C. So we have an E flat, so we have an E here. I'm gonna use this inversion, this triad. 
E flat major would be this, so E flat would be this, the one, three, five, and then I'm going to use the minor form of that with a C note in the bass. C, one, three, five, so we have one, three, five, and then we have the flatted five, and then the flat seven, and then the, the sharp nine. So we'd have to use the C, and then, what is that? In order to get it to lay out properly on the guitar neck. The C major nine is just basically a C triad with a, a G triad on the top of it. So we're super clean, super bright sounding, one, three, five. And of course the fifth note is shared. We have the G. So one, three, five, and then the five would be, the one, three, five of the G chord would be, as it related to the C chord, a five, a seven, and a nine. So we have a one, what do we have, a C note here, and then the three. So we have one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay, we're using just a sort of a pianistic sort of voicing here. The other one, number four, we have a C6, nine, sharp, 11, which is in a D chord and a C chord, right? So we have the C chord here and then the D chord, the D triad. Both of those triads are kind of being merged together. So we have a one, three, five, and then in, you know, the three, five, one, as it is in relating to D in this position, in this particular shape. We have one, three, five, and then three, five, one as a D chord, but now we have a, a sharp 11, a six, and a nine. So one, three, five, sh ele sharp 11, six, and nine. So we'll go to C. We have a one, a three, and then a one and a three. And again, I'm just going to place my finger, my index finger on the root note, middle finger on the third, and then the, uh, I can't really play the five, so I have the one, three, sharp 11, one, three, sharp 11, six, and then nine. So that's a really, that's a really cool chord shape. That's number four. So number five is gonna be C7, C major seven, Sharp five, natural five. This is really one of my favorite chords ever, and I, I learned this from one of my uh, one of my good friends and guitar mentors. Um, I don't know if you've heard Gary Whitner's playing yet or not, but he's just got this major seven sharp five stuff together, and it's totally owned in his repertoire. So go check his stuff out uh, if you if you want. You know, you don't have to, but it's recommended. So C major seven sharp five. Uh, is basically going to be a C major triad with an E major triad. Right, so the guitar voicing would, easy voicing would be this. We have a one, three, five, and then again, we have the uh, root note of the E, and then the three and the five. But as those, tri those tones from the E major triad relate back to the C root note, we have, we have a sharp five, a major seven, and a three. So if we wanted to try to stack these together, we have a root, a root, a three, a sharp five, a major seven, and a three. That's a really cool chord. Number six is the C7 flat nine sharp 11. So we have those two chords, C and then F sharp. We have F sharp which is F, a, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, super sharp, and then we have the C root, the C chord triad underneath it. And they're tritone apart, right? The root notes are a tritone apart, which is kind of like the interval diabolique or something like that. Remember that one from way back in the day? So we have the root note, the three, and then we have the sharp 11, the flat seven, and then the flatted nine. Really cool chord sound. Number, did we do C? We did seven now. We're doing, we did six, we're doing seven now. We're doing C7 sharp nine augmented. 
basically is the C7 chord with an A flat on the top. That flatted six or that giant step sort of interval, right? So we have that C, A flat is of course going to be one, three, five, A flat major triad, but we're going to use it as, as it relates back to the C root note. So we have a C, that's a flatted six, we have a root note and then we ha also have a, a sharp nine. So we have this uh, C, one, three, five, sharp five, augmented root, and then sharp nine. But it all hinges back to where the root note is. Really cool sounding stuff. Eight, we're gonna start zipping through these because we have, we're familiar with the concept now. So eight is basically a C7 chord or a C chord over the A, or an A chord over the C7, right? So we have one, three, five, which is gonna be relating to C. It's gonna be the, the one, we have the one, three, three, six, flat nine, and then major three. So we have the root, sorry, the root three, six, flat nine, and three. And number nine is going to be C11, which is really one of my favorite chords. Really easy guitar, totally guitaristic play, as long as you're playing this inversion of it, you know, really cool stuff. So we have that C11, which is a, is a C7 chord. We're gonna use a C triad for in our cases today, but just know that it's the C, the one, three, five, flat and seven, so C, E, G, B flat, right? So we have the C, E, seven, C, E, one, three, five, flat seven, and then we have the B flat, which is the flat seven, the th and then the nine, and then the 11. So we have one, three, we three, and then we'll use the B flat triad here, which is 11, uh, flat seven, and then nine. Really cool sound on the guitar. Number 10 is C major seven sharp nine sharp 11, which is a B chord on top of a C chord. So we have the really cool B chord on top of a, remember in uh, Crossroads, I think Steve Vai might have played that chord. Something, some variation of that chord. So we have the B, which is the, you know, it hosts the, um, the sharp 11, the major seven, and then the flat, uh, the sharp nine. Really interesting chord sonority here. So let's take a look at putting it all together. So where were we? We were on with uh, number 10, C major seven, sharp nine, sharp 11, with a C chord, with a B chord on top of it. C seven, flat nine, augmented. It's gonna be C, C minor, this is kind of wild. So we have a C minor chord shape, right? So the one, three, five, one flat, three, five with a C note in the bass. So C major. Wow, wild stuff. C seven sharp nine. Which is pretty much the same as number one. There are some exceptions, but number 13 is C major seven, which is a C major triad. One, three, five with an E minor triad on top. So we we use that one on top. So we have um, a five, a major seven and a, ma a major third. So we have one, three, five, seven, three. So that's pretty much, you know, we're used to hearing that as a C major seven. But we could also understand it as a C minor, let's see, an E minor over C chord. Number 14 is C11 13, which is a D minor chord on top of a C7. So we have, let's take a look, one, three, five, and then we have nine, 11, six, or 13. Cool stuff. Number 15 is going to be C9, which is a G minor chord. One flat three five for G minor, but as it relates to C chord, it's C E, so one, three, five, flat seven, nine. So that's pretty pretty 
pretty straightforward. It's just a really cool way to start breaking down these larger chords that into triads so that we could actually play triadic shapes over over, you know, anyway, long story short, single note soloing applications. So 16 is C7, 6, or 13. So there's an A minor triad on top of the C major triad. So we have 1, 3, 6, 1, 3, 6, 1, 3. So that's pretty much, I don't have the 7 in there, but, but we could, you know. Number 17 is C11 flat 9, really cool, another cool chord. B flat minor with a, f as it relates to the C note, the C bass note with C, C major triad again on the bottom. And then we have the C, so we have the 1, 3, 4, flat 7, flat 9. interesting sound like how would we ever use this well that's a great question it does come to us but it comes to us over time and as we continue to push through this book together we start to answer those questions for ourselves as individual guitar players number 18 now is c13 sharp 11 which is going to be a d chord on top of a c sharp chord which is it's cool, you know, I'm gonna use, try to find a voicing that works. So we have, we could pretty much just do this, right? So one, three, f six, uh, nine, sharp 11. You know, to make it, to simplify it. C minor nine equals a G chord in example 19. C minor nine equals a G minor chord on top of a C minor chord. Oh, interesting. We gotta pay attention here because he's changing the sonority around on us. So we have the root C minor, we have C minor and then five and then flat seven and then nine. Okay root note is right there, so those sonorities, G minor. This is what happens when you sing a C note in the bass and play a G minor on top of it. It's really cool sounding. So number 20 is C minor 11 again, one of my favorite voicings, but let's see what happens. We have a B flat triad on top of a C minor triad. So one three, one flat three, five, getting a little challenging for me to do these. I don't do these very often. So C, one flat three, five, flat seven and nine. Okay, and then the last one that we're going to talk about in this chapter is section six from the polytonal chords or polychords and bitonal chords in Ted Green's Chord Chemistry is number 21, which is C minor major seven nine. And that's a C minor triad with a G major triad on the top. So really, really cool. Again, really cool stuff. Gary Whitner stuff, you know, Thelonious Monk stuff. So we have this one th flat three, five major seven, and then nine. So that's that. Now we'll just read through the rest of the, the notes in this chapter. This polytonal type of logic is useful if you are playing with another guitar player, bass player, piano player, or any other musician involved with creating the harmonic foundation of a piece of music. For example, I have two examples that he listed here. Mr. Green begins with the first example. For an A11 sound, the bass player can play an A bass note, and you could play a G triad. And that gives us that nice, beautiful, lush, rich A11 sound. When, you're super, when you are superimposing triads on a bass note, it's usually best to avoid using low sounding voicings. That is, stick to medium to very high notes and let the bass player's note carry the bottom. So we don't wanna be stepping on each other's toes and if one goes down, the other one goes up and then vice versa, just to provide a sense of balance. You can hear that balance in the, 
Matheny, Hayden records, uh, you know, some Jim Hall stuff. The, the, that balance, that universal balance is listed everywhere where there are listening musicians interacting with each other in this, this kind of forum. As usual, you will have to experiment to see how this type of thinking works. So number two, if another guitar player were playing, he could play or she could play the A triad or just root and fifth, since the third is not necessary in an 11th chord. On the low strings, you could play G triads in the high strings. So if we had like the A, the root and fifth, let's see the root and fifth, and then the root and fifth, and then he's look, talking about playing the G major triad on the top. You can easily replicate what that might sound like on your own guitar by playing the A, the root and fifth, and then the, you know, an inversion of the G major triad, the first inversion, three, five, one, right? As it relates to G, but now it's it's the nine, eleven, and flatted seven for A eleven. This again would produce an A eleven sound. There are nearly an infinite number of polychord sounds if you look for them. So this is a great start, and it's not meant to be totally absorbed now, it's just a, introducing the concept. So it'll feel a little bit, if this is new for us, it will feel a little bit like we're floating around thinking, oh, whoa, dude, this is, uh, you know, a little wacky. But the more you revisit this section, the more you review this section, and the more you build it into your playing, and you add it to your practice routine or think about it, just think about these things, maybe make recordings and then play one chord over the next and then just kind of listen. And uh, the more we do that, the more those poly chords and bitonal chords will be absorbed into our own playing styles and our own playing um, personas, you know. So I really appreciate you coming. Grab the book if you haven't gotten it yet, up here or link in the description. And once again, I, I'm just so thrilled to have all of the support and the comments. So just keep those comments coming and it really gives us the energy to continue along and just be here. And uh, I guess we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm just happy that I'm along here in your journey and uh, we can chat along the way. So thanks again for popping in and until next time, happy picking.